What's up, YouTube family and Samuel Vertical Expressions? Welcome to another episode of Bible Breakdown, Bible Studies, and today we are going to be covering Acts chapter 14. Now, I know you guys are excited. You know, let's slow down a little bit. First, let me give you the title, title of the Bible study. The title for today's Bible study is going to be This Is How I Fight My Battles. And yes, it's the name of a song. I suggest you check it out. It's really good. I am by no means or in any way affiliated with them but if they want to go ahead and sponsor me for the shout out they can go ahead and do so now without further ado let's get started okay so i want to start off with reading verses one through seven so grab your bibles we're gonna go through this real quick at iconium paul and barnabas went as usual into the jewish synagogue there they spoke so effectively that a great number of Jews and Greeks believed, but the Jews who refused to believe stirred up the other Gentiles and poisoned their minds against the brothers. So Paul and Barnabas spent considerable time there speaking boldly for the Lord, who confirmed the message of his grace by enabling them to perform signs and wonders. The people of the city were divided, some sided with the Jews, others with the apostles. There was a plot among both Gentiles and Jews together with their leaders to mistreat them and stone them, but they found out about it and fled to the Lyconian cities of Lystra and Derbe and to be in the surrounded country where they continue to preach the gospel. Amen. All right. So two things from those verses that just stood out to me. They were kind of like, whoa. First, we see that the apostles are like, they're like spitting, spinning straight 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 fire i didn't want to say it but i couldn't think of another word um they're spitting straight fire and they're they're sharing the gospel and people are believing and then all of a sudden you know everything was going good and then all of a sudden the haters started to hate you know the jews came out of nowhere starting uh going to the gentiles to stir up trouble and just uh take the focus away from the gospel and put it more towards nonsense and all that 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 gossip and stuff and all that chitty chatty you guys know you guys know those voices whenever you're doing good you, you walk with christ is on point and everything is fine then all of a sudden the little chit chats the little like the little little jabs little stuff that want to get in the way between you and god that's exactly what happened to the apostle now the second thing that pops up is something that you know just raised it raised a red flag because the scripture says that the Jews went to the Gentiles to stir up trouble. Now, we know one thing about the Jews is that they do not like the Gentiles. They do not like the Gentiles. They think they're better than the Gentiles. They're not supposed to really be uh, associating with the Gentiles. But all of a sudden, it's okay for them to go to the Gentiles and use them as a weapon or use them as a form to distract the people from the gospel and to stir up conflict. Now, why is this important? Well, I know... I know for a fact, there's, there's no hesitation. I know that a lot of times where we feel uncomfortable in a situation, where we feel like we're a situation's out of control, where we're, we're not at the center of it, we're not in control of the situation like we would like to be. What's, what's one of those things that we do? We start running to substances that we should not be associating ourselves with. When you're feeling a little stressed, what are you tempted to do? And when you're feeling a little insecure, what are you being tempted to do? I mean, the answer to those questions, I mean, they might be positive. Of course, you should be going to Jesus, a worship, prayer, all of that. Connect with God, yes. But if we're being real, we know that sometimes, sometimes we're just tempted with doing the wrong things. We give into our emotions. We say things we shouldn't be saying. We do things we shouldn't be doing. We entertain thoughts that we shouldn't be entertaining. And we see that the Jews are feeling insecure. You know, the apostles are coming up and they're working miracles and they're kind of like taking the light away from them. They feel like they're losing their position in like the social hierarchy of things. And what do they do? They start neglecting their principles and they start running to a substance that they should not be going to. They should not be really going to the Gentiles or associating themselves with the Gentiles. But they're doing it because they see it as a means to an end to get what they want. Now, that's just a recommendation. Whenever you find yourself running to substances that you have no business with as a son, as a daughter of Christ, you know what? Check yourself. Be real about it. Say, hey, I'm better than this. Because you know what? You are better than that. You're better than whatever that thing is 
you're a hundred times better than that. All right, so we're gonna hit verses eight through 20. It's a little bit of reading. I'm gonna try to speed on through it, but I suggest you guys read along your Bible app, whatever it is, just read along. In Lystra, there sat a man who was lame. He had been that way from birth and had never walked. He listened to Paul as he was speaking. Paul looked directly at him, saw that he had faith to be healed and called out, stand up on your feet. At that, the man jumped up and began to walk. When the crowd saw Paul, what Paul had done, they shouted in the Lyconian language, the gods have come down to us in human form. Barnabas, Paul, Barnabas they called Zeus and Paul they called Hermes. Hermes, I said it the right way, Hermes, only because I know the clothing brand. Barnabas they called Zeus and Paul they called Hermes because he was the chief speaker. The priest of Zeus, whose temple was just outside the city, brought bulls and reefs to the city gates because he and the crowd wanted to offer them sacrifices. But when the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard of this, they tore their clothes and rushed out into the crowd shouting, friends, why are you doing this? We too are only humans like you. We are bringing good news, telling you to turn from these worthless things to the living God who made the heavens and the earth and the sea and everything in them. In the past, he let all nations go on their own way. Yet, yet he has not left himself without testimony. He has shown kindness by giving you rain from heaven and crops in the seasons. He provides you with plenty of food and fills your heart with joy. Even with these words, they had difficulty keeping the crowd from sacrificing to them. Then some Jews came from Antioch and Iconium and won the crowd over. They stoned Paul and dragged him outside of the city thinking he was dead. But after the disciples had gathered around him, he got up and went back into the city. The next day, he and Barnabas left to Derby. Now I want to say Paul was a straight up G. Like, he got stoned, knocked out, probably concussed, and then just got right back up for round two. The man. So real quick, I want to point out verse 17 because verse 17 to me, it's like a breath of fresh air. It's so lovely. It's so encouraging. Verse 17, Paul is saying, that God has not left himself without testimony. Pretty much, he's saying, although you guys haven't seen him, you, you, he's been present, you know, he's given you rain, he's given you crops, God has always been there for you. Now, why do I think that's a big deal? I think that's a big deal because if we look at what Paul and Barnabas are going through, I mean, they're working their butts off, they're preaching the gospel. Paul is getting stoned. It's like they're taking one step forward and two steps back. They, they think they're on a roll. They start preaching the gospel. They work a miracle. Instead of the people seeing the miracle of God, instead they start worshiping other gods and calling them Zeus and Hermes. And it's like they're, they're giving their best effort, but that doesn't seem to be enough. And I think so many times we find ourselves in similar situations where we're giving our best effort. We're trying to be the best kind of Christians that we can be. You know, we're trying to do all, all things right. We're trying to walk right. You know, but life is just getting in the way. It's like you take one step forward, two steps back. And in those moments, we kind of, it's so easy to feel like God is not present. How many times have you prayed? How many times have you taken time to just reach out to God and feel like God is not there? Like it's just silence. Like you're doing your best. You're playing your part and you're looking at God like, God, you know, what's up? But it's so encouraging to, to, to see verse 17 and know that the fact that you have breath, the fact that you get to open your mouth and call on the name of Jesus one time, one time, is just testimony that God is still with us. We may not see him moving actively. We may be too blinded by the stress. We may be too blinded by everything that's going on for us to notice everything that God is doing. But we have breath, we have life, we have opportunities to change the situation at hand. Being able to notice when God is moving, even when it doesn't seem like he's moving, is such a valuable tool that is going to help you to build momentum. It's going to help you to persevere. It's going to help you to keep grinding it out no matter how tough things get. You know, being able to recognize that God is for you and not against you, that God is with you, even in those moments where you feel like he's silent or he's not present. That's one of the biggest tools as a Christians that you as a Christian that you can have. That's going to allow you to continue to move forward, continue to keep grinding. It's going to keep your 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 focus in the right place. We, like I said before, we don't have to run to substances of the things that we can see. We don't got to run to the things that may be wrong for us just because they're present. We have the hope that God is still for us. We have the hope 
that God is still working, although we may not see it at the moment. Now I want to read verses 21 to 28. Let's get it. They preached the gospel in that city and won a large number of disciples. Then they returned to Lystra, Iconium, and Antioch, strengthening the disciples and encouraging them to remain true to the faith. We must go through many hardships to enter the kingdom of God, they said. Paul and Barnabas appointed elders for them in each church and with prayer and fasting committed them to the Lord in whom they had put their trust. After going through... Whatever, whatever. It, guys, Google that for me and let me know how you're supposed to say that. I would do it, but... They came into Pamphylia, and when they had preached the word in Perga, they went down to Italia. From Italia, they sailed back to Antioch, where they had been committed to the grace of God for the work they had now completed. On arriving there, they gathered the church together and reported all that God had done through them and how he had opened doors of faith to the Gentiles, and they stayed there for a long time with the disciples. So now we're concluding the chapter, and I think that this, this is where the lesson is. This is where we learn how to fight our battle, right? Because we see that Paul and Barnabas, they get back to Antioch. It's kind of like where this all started. They go back to the beginning, the job is done, and what they do once they get there is they start telling the other disciples everything that God has done. They start bragging on, they start bragging on the Lord. God did this, God did that, the miracles, the people who were won over, and all that stuff. Now, we just finished going through this chapter, and so far in this chapter, these guys have taken one step forward and two steps back. It's like, no matter how hard they preached, and the Bible says in the early verses that they were preaching at their best, um, it didn't matter how much effort they were giving it's like the society and life everybody was just pushing back against them so it's so trivial to see that they get back to antioch to a place where they they're safe and instead of beginning to complain about their hardships instead they start bragging on the lord and talking about everything that god did do and i think that's where the lesson is here you see our our fight our our battle is not against flesh and blood we know that through the scripture we can learn from Barnabas and Paul and and when we get to those moments where life gets a little difficult where life gets a little tough we should not focus ourselves on complaining on everything that's wrong on everything that you can change on I mean Paul was nearly murdered he got stoned to almost death and he gets to Antioch and then he just starts talking about how they won some people over instead of focusing on everybody that they didn't win over. You know, it's it's such a big deal and it's something that as Christians we have to start practicing because there's no way we are going to make it out those dark situations alive if all we do is focus and set our, 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 our eyes, our perspective, our vision on everything that's wrong. I mean, you're gonna drown. There's, there's no way out of that darkness if you're focusing on the dark spot. It's like, you're lost in a cave, and instead of looking towards the, the light where the exit is, you're, you're shifting your focus and your perspective into the dark abyss, into that unknown. We shouldn't be doing that. If there's one thing I want you to take from this Bible study is the practice of rejoicing in the things that God did and not the things he didn't. Every, 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 every part of your life, you know, for every high, there is a low. You know, for every great moment, there's going to be a bad moment. But if you choose to just fix your perspective on everything that's negative, you are never going to see the positive and you are never going to see God move in your life. If you find yourself in a situation that you can't control, I encourage you to do what Paul and Barnabas did. You know what? Do the best that you can do. Preach the best that you can to yourself. You know, change whatever you can from that situation. But when you reach the end of yourself, don't try to push it any farther. Trust that God is in control. Trust that God is for you and not against you. And trust that God is going to move in that situation. And when the time comes, you know what? Don't even bother complaining. Don't even bother focusing on the pain, focusing on the hurt. You know, fix your eyes on greater things. Fix your eyes on everything that God did. Fix your eyes that you went through that situation and it did not break you. Fix your eyes on the fact that you are still breathing and you are still alive. Fix your eyes on that you have the hope of tomorrow, that God can still move. 
Fix your eyes on the promises of the Lord and not the reality of, of the darkness that you're seeing around you because you know what, that's where your faith is born. It's not in the things that you see, it's in the things unseen. You know, my prayer today is for us to understand that this, this Christian walk, it's 50-50, it's 50-50 it's with God. Like, we gotta do our part, yes, no doubt about it. But we have to trust that God is going to do his part for sure, for sure. We cannot start thinking that we have to run to foreign substances or take matters into our own hands because we are only going to get in God's, we're only gonna get in God's way. So my prayer is, Lord, that you may help us to let go of our selfish ambitions and instead of fall in line to your plans. Help us to walk in your pace. Help us to see things the way that you see things. Help us to look forward towards your promises and all that you have, God. Most of all, help us to let go of that horrible, horrible habit of complaining and fixing our eyes on the negative, Father God. Instead, let us rejoice, Father God, in all your promises and all your goodness and all the good things that you're doing that are just creeping below our radar because we're not paying attention, God. I thank you, Lord, and I thank you for these beautiful people. I hope you guys have a blessed day. Please, please don't forget to subscribe, share, and comment. You know, I want to hear from you guys. Let me know if this is helping. Let me know if it's not helping. I really want to hear from you. Do not forget, do not forget to bless that like button. Let's keep this going. Let's keep the momentum going. So it's been awesome, awesome, awesome. I'll see you guys next time on Bible Breakdown.